Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Penny and this is Little by Little. If you're a first timer here, I'm so happy that you joined us. If you've been here before, welcome back. Well, I thought spring was almost upon us. We had some beautiful weather this last couple of weeks. Uh, warm enough here to be walking around without a jacket. And then this morning we woke up to six inches of snow. So I guess it's not quite over yet. But that's okay we are hardy up here and so we're just gonna hunker down until it's over uh, in today's video we are gonna go back into the kitchen and I'm gonna finish off the coffee bar I've been working on so the last little piece for the coffee bar was the little bar fridge and so that's what we're gonna do today it's a nice short video because it's a fairly easy little piece it's just a box with a door on it so we'll get right to it and I hope you enjoy it before we start, I just wanted to say that the measurements that I've given you in the description box are based on the dimensions of this space in my coffee bar. If you are making a uh, mini bar fridge for yourself, um, you don't necessarily have to follow this exact uh, dimensions that I'm going to be using uh, because maybe you want your little fridge to be a little bit wider or a little bit taller. It isn't, I don't think, exactly what a normal bar fridge would be uh, but it is the space that I'm going to be using here. Now the structure for the fridge is actually quite simple. We're just going to be making a three-sided box to start. I'm starting with piece A which is the back in the middle here and then the two pieces marked C which are our two side pieces. So I'm just going to line them up so that they're nice and straight across the bottom and I'm going to put a piece of painter's tape across so that they stay nice and even. And you can go ahead and flip it over and what we're going to do here is we're going to make some measurements where the shelves are going to be inside of the fridge. I want to add two dividers so that I have three separate shelves inside of the fridge. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to measure from the bottom up. I'm going to put a pencil mark at the 20 millimeter or 2 centimeter mark and then at the 40 millimeter mark. Then I'm going to make those same measurements on the other side as well. And I'm going to join up those two sets of measurements all the way across all three pieces. These lines are going to act as a guide so that when we put our shelves in, we put them in straight. So just go ahead and put that aside for a moment. And I'm going to bring in the two pieces marked F. So these two pieces will be on the very bottom of the fridge. They'll be like a base, but they're most important because they're going to be able to help me hinge the door. Now you can see here that there is a long and a short side. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim away about a three millimeter wide strip from the bottom, but not all the way to the end. We're going to take off about 37 millimeters and we're going to leave behind a little notch here that's three millimeters by three millimeters. So it should look like this one when you're done. I've also gone in with my X-Acto knife and just rounded that little tip off a little bit as well. Didn't want it to be perfectly square. So I'm going to bring back those original three pieces now and we're going to start to put the fridge together. So the middle piece is our base and the two sides are going to sit on top of the base. So we're just going to apply some glue to the long side of PC. And then we'll attach it right on top of that base. Now you want to use something to prop that up so that it stays at a 90 degree angle. Um, I like to use my one, two, three blocks, um, but if you don't have any of those, anything that's a solid square will help to keep that nice and straight. And then we're just going to repeat that exact same process for the other side.
So once that's had a chance to dry, now we can go ahead and we can add the top and the bottom. So those would be pieces marked B, and you should have two of them, one for each side. So all we need to do is just add some glue to these top edges. And then we'll just use the same process to put the bottom piece on. Now you should have a nice three-sided box. I want to make some braces for my shelves to sit on, so I'm just using these craft matchsticks. So I'm just starting by measuring the opening of the fridge. This will give me the length that I need for the piece that goes at the back of the fridge, and I'm going to need to cut two of those. I'm sorry, it's hard to see that ruler. I just installed a brand new light above my workstation, and I did not realize how much glare I was going to get off of that little ruler. So I've just gone ahead and I've glued in that one piece, and as you can see, I'm just below the pencil line. So whether you're above the pencil line, below the pencil line, doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent with all of the pieces. So we'll go ahead and glue in the second one now. Okay, and now we're just going to take a few more matchsticks and we're going to do the same thing on each side of the fridge. Before I do any more work on the fridge, I want to take a couple of minutes and just work on the doors. So this is actually going to be a glass door. So these pieces here are more of the frame for the glass. So the very first thing that I did was I went in with some sandpaper and I sanded down the inside top edge of all four of those pieces. I wanted it, when it's put together, to kind of round down onto the glass rather than be a sharp corner. At this point, you're gonna to need to decide which direction your fridge door is gonna open. It's gonna open from the right or from the left. And that makes a difference because there is one more edge that we need to sand, which I'll get to in just one second. So my little fridge, I'm going to have it open on the left-hand side. And so on the bottom part of this piece of wood, so underneath the strip on the left-hand side, you're going to need to uh, sand down that as well. Because when you're opening the fridge, you don't want it to catch on the corner. So you've sanded the inside edge, and then you also have to flip it over and sand the bottom of the outside edge. And you only need to do that to just this one piece. I'm putting a small mark on that piece just so I don't forget which one is which. So you can see here that I've cut off a 90 degree angle off of all of these pieces. So I just wanted to mention that the measurements that I've given you in your cutting instructions, that length is for the outside or the longest edge of each of these pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead now and just glue these four pieces together and just basically I'm making a frame. I'm adding a little bit of wood filler here where the pieces are glued together. That's just going to give a little bit smoother finish when I go to paint it afterwards. 
and we just give that a little bit of time to dry and once it's dried we can sand it and a lot of the bulk from that wood filler will be gone. I'm going to go back to the fridge for a minute um, and I know it seems like I'm jumping around but I really want to do all of the painting before I do anything more on that door. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to work on some shelves for inside of the fridge. So you can either use plastic packaging um, or you can use some sort of a plastic. I have these uh, polystyrene sheets that um, actually they're quite thin but they're quite sturdy and I think I'm going to make my shelves out of this material. Now I've put the measurements for your shelves in your cutting instructions but I would suggest that you go in and just measure your space before you start cutting just in case things have gone off by a little bit. Of course you'll need one for each of the shelves that you're planning on putting in. And once we've done all of our painting, we're just going to slide those in and they'll just sit on top of those three little pieces that you put in there as braces for your shelves. Speaking of painting, it's time to do that step. So I'm going to paint the inside of my fridge a white color and in all likelihood it's probably going to take a couple of coats to get some good coverage. Once your paint is dry, you can go ahead and install those shelves. I'm just putting a little bit of glue on the top of each of those shelf braces just so that the shelf stays in place and doesn't fall out on me. The remainder of the fridge, or the outside of the fridge, as well as the frame on the door, I'm going to paint uh, metallic silver. Now if you have ever painted with metallic acrylic paints, you probably know this already, but if you just put that metallic paint on wood or on plastic directly, it tends to not cover very well at all. In fact, it almost looks like it's uh, translucent, really. Um, and so in order to get that nice, bright, metallic look, um, I put down a base coat first. Now, a lot of people will just use black, and they'll use black under both gold and silver and copper, and it works just fine. I tend to use um, a darker gray when I'm painting with silver, and then a yellow if I'm painting gold. So my first coat of paint is going to be this gray acrylic paint. This is not the metallic paint, it's just a basic gray paint. And then once you've got that base coat down, then you can go ahead and add your metallic paint over top. So there we have the door and then of course the outside of the fridge. The only thing I didn't paint was the very bottom because I am going to be gluing a base onto there so there's no need to paint that part of it. So now it's time to finish the door. So just based on where I've sanded down those edges it's easy for me to tell now which side the hinge is going to go on. And so I'm just going to be using some plastic packaging for the glass. Um, so I've just cut out a piece of plastic that's almost exactly the same size as the door frame. It's just slightly narrower. I've left about two or three millimeters um, in the shorter side or the width uh, because I don't want that packaging to go beyond where I've sanded off that corner. So I'm just going to go ahead now and put some glue down on the back of the frame and then we're going to lay that plastic right on top. And here's just a little bit better view of where that plastic stops so that it's not interfering with the opening of the door. 
To attach the door, I'm going to be making a pin hinge. So basically on the side where you've done all that little extra sanding, we're going to drill a hole on the top and the bottom on that same side. And that hole is going to go down about a quarter of an inch. So the width of that door is three millimeters. So when you're drilling your hole, you're going to come right in the middle of that three millimeter width. So at one and a half millimeters, and then you're going to come in from the edge, the same amount, one and a half millimeters. Once you've drilled that hole, then just take your ordinary straight pin or sewing pin, push it into the hole and see how far you've drilled down. Now, in this case, I've made a hole that's about a quarter of an inch deep. If you're dealing in millimeters, it's about eight millimeters. Then I have to add to that eight millimeters another three millimeters to go through the piece of wood that's going to hold that door on. So I'm going to cut a piece off of the bottom of this pin that's about 11 millimeters or just shy of three eighths of an inch long. To cut these pins, I just use this little pair of wire cutters. These pins actually cut quite easy. Just be very careful. Um, you don't want those little pieces of pin to fly off on you. So I'm just going to test the length of the pin now and see how far it goes in. I think this one probably is a little bit long yet, so I'm probably going to have to trim a little bit off of the end. You'll need two of those pieces, one for each side. Let's create the base next so that this pin hinge has something to go into. You can go ahead and glue both of those pieces together. So these pieces of wood are very thin. So once you've got them together, you'll need to either clamp them or weight them down while that glue dries. Otherwise, this is going to warp on you. While that base is drying, we're going to make the piece that will hold the top hinge in. So you'll need both of your pieces marked I. So if you have a modern fridge and you go and look at it, you'll probably see that there is this oval or maybe even like a teardrop shaped piece of plastic coming off of the top of the refrigerator that holds your fridge door on. So that's what I'm trying to recreate here. So I've just gone in and I've drawn an oval shape and now I'm just going to cut that out. So you'll need to cut out two of these and then you'll glue them together. Please ignore the fact that one is smaller than the other. I did go back in and recut that smaller one to make it a little bit bigger. I did some light sanding on that base just to make sure that that section there where the pin hinge is going to go is nice and rounded off and even. I've done the same on the smaller piece that's going to go on the top. Now on the base I'm going to drill a hole right in the middle of that section that sticks out. And then in that smaller piece I want to drill a hole at one end of that oval. So I'm going to try and come in one and a half millimeters from the end and if that little piece is wide enough it should be at least three millimeters then you should be in the center of the width of that piece. So it's time to glue that base now onto the bottom of the fridge. So just add some glue here. 
and then you can go ahead and attach it to the bottom of the fridge. Just make sure that that area that juts out that has the pin in it is on the right side of the fridge for where your door is going to open. I would also make sure to clamp that piece down or tape it down with some masking tape or painter's tape uh, just because you'll probably get some warping from those two thin pieces at the bottom. I went in here and painted the base the same silver color to match the fridge. So we're going to add on the fridge door next. So I'm just taking a little bit of wood glue here and just putting it on that pin so that when I push the pin in, it stays in place. Then I'm adding a little bit more glue onto the top once it's pushed through so that that glue then goes into the fridge door and keeps the door in place. Once the bottom pin is in place, it's time to attach the top one. Now I realized here that the original one I made was way too short and I did go back and rework the dimensions of that. So the correct dimensions are in your cutting instructions. So we're going to follow basically the same process as below. I put a little bit of glue here um, and that's going to go into the hole of the door first. And then again, adding a little bit of glue to the top before I push it down into the fridge door. Once the door is in place, then you can go ahead and glue the back part of that hinge to the top of the fridge. Once the glue is dry, you can go ahead and paint that little piece as well. And here's our finished fridge. You can see that the door opens and closes very smoothly. I thought I might have to put a magnet in there to keep the door closed tightly, but it turned out that I didn't. It actually stayed closed just fine all on its own. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope you like this little fridge. I'm going to get busy filling it with all of my favorite beverages and I will see you all in the next video. Take care and bye for now.